We are now in part two of section three, which is about going deeper into the SAM principles. In part one, we covered the ISO standard 19770 for IT asset management. We also looked at the three process tiers and some general items such as processes, critical success factors, KPIs, uh, the importance of change management in an organization, and the concept of policies, particularly from a SAM perspective. In part two, we will continue the journey to learn more about the principles. And we are particularly covering here roles in SAM and the business case within SAM. We begin with roles and responsibilities related to SAM. The purpose of the roles and responsibilities is to ensure that the SAM processes are successfully implemented in an organization and that the roles and responsibilities are clearly defined, agreed, and recognized. The objective of these roles and responsibilities are to ensure that for software and related assets, these are clearly defined, maintained, and understood by all stakeholders affected. We have here the concept of RACI, R-A-C-I, R for responsible, A for accountable, C for consulted, and I for informed. It means here that organizations must clearly define all the roles when designing the software asset management processes. The RACI model offers a close and uh, clear and easy way of tracking about who does what in each process and allows speedy and confident decision making. It's an acronym for responsible, meaning the person or people responsible for accurate execution or getting the job done. Responsible is about the execution. Accountable is usually one person only uh, who has the ownership of the process and the result from it. Consulted means those who are consulted and whose opinions are sought. They might provide input based on their knowledge, expertise. Informed means people who are kept updated on the progress of the service. And they receive information about the process execution and the quality. For the message on this slide is that there is only one person always accountable. Accountability cannot be shared or split, but we can have more people in R, C, and I. This is how a RACI table would look like. We got at the top, we got customer, HAM manager, procurement manager, finance manager, HAM analyst, and change manager. And uh, we have different process activities listed in the leftmost column. And we can see here clearly who is accountable for the top three processes, who are responsible, who all are informed, and who might be consulted. We don't see here any consulting letter. The C is missing, but that's okay. Look at what a function means. A function is a team or group of people and the tools they use to perform one or more processes or activities. For the software asset management life cycle, an organization will need to clearly define the roles and responsibilities required to undertake the processes and activities involved in each life cycle stage. These roles need to be assigned to individuals and there should be an appropriate structure of teams, groups, or functions which need to be established and managed. Processes must work across the various functions. Each function has its own specialist knowledge and should have focus on their skills needed to perform the activities. Sometimes functions are also known as silos. What is a role? It is a set of responsibilities, activities, and authorities granted to a person or a team. It is defined in a process or a function. One person or team may have multiple roles. In the software lifecycle, several roles need to be performed. SAM provides guidelines and examples of roles and their descriptions. These are not exhaustive nor prescriptive, and roles will need to be combined or even separated at times. Therefore, organizations should apply this guidance carefully so as to suit their own structure and objectives. Roles should not be confused with job titles. Therefore, they are not the same. Each organization have its own job titles and job descriptions. 
and individuals holding these job titles can perform one or more of these roles. Next, so we have uh, objective SAM competence, meaning to understand the purpose of competence in SAM, it is ensure that appropriate competence and expertise in SAM is available and applied in relation to the roles. SAM competencies can include the following, clear understanding of the item and SAM disciplines, high level understanding of technology, strong understanding of the business, financial management skills, negotiation skills, interpersonal skills, legal knowledge, strong analytical skills, ability to solve problems, etc. We see some generic roles here on this slide. We see three of them. We have the process owner role, the process manager role, and the process practitioner role. The process owner is accountable for the overall quality of the process, is responsible for ensuring that the process is fit for purpose, and responsible for the sponsorship, design, and change management of the process. Process manager is accountable for the operational management of a process. The word accountability is appearing in the process manager role as well as the process owner role. But the difference is that in process manager, the accountability is for the operational management, the day-to-day the -day working and clarifying the process, defining the process. However, the process owner ensures that the process quality is good and ensures that the process is suited for the purpose and sponsorship, it uh, has a strategic uh, focus on the process. Process practitioners are the one who execute the process. Process manager can also perform the process practitioner role, or there may be other independent practitioners executing the process. 